Chapter 48 Great Harlots Fall After the fall of Jerusalem chapters, the book of Revelation records a long lament, that modeled the utterance of the first fall of Jerusalem of the 6th century BC. A woman is depicted one who sits as a queen and says I am no widow, but her desolation and humiliation were to come. She stood for the city of Jerusalem, and one purpose of the lament was to mourn the fall of the city. However, there are double meanings as usual. The woman wasn't just a symbol of the city, she was a woman who had been a queen of Jerusalem, but she was destined for a fall. She was the sister of Agrippa II, Bernice, who had acquired the type of career of the Herod family and then acted as his consort. In 27 AD, Bernice was born as the twin of Agrippa, she married and became a widow, and remarried at the age of 16. Their uncle Herod of Chalcis was her second husband, and she had two sons with him. He died when Bernice was 21, and she remained a widow for some time. Until she committed incest with her brother, who had never married, and rumors circulated. After that, she married Polomo of Cilicia, a foreigner who was attracted to her wealth, he agreed to be circumcised and to practice the Jewish religion. The marriage didn't last, Bernice had given up to licentiousness, and deserted Polomo. As Acts shows, she had always acted as official consort to her brother, in 60 AD, in Caesarea, Paul had a discussion with Agrippa and Bernice in the presence of an audience, and here she was called the queen by Josephus. At the beginning of the war, Bernice became a heroine to the Jewish people, and she showed more initiative than her brother. In 66 AD, while her brother was absent in Alexandria, she visited Jerusalem as part of her Nazi right vow, appearing barefoot with a shaven head. The cruelest procurator, Jesius Florus had just committed one of his worst atrocities, crucifying, and scourging Jews who were of the highest rank, and those who possessed Roman citizenship. Bernice sent messengers to Florus, expressing the outrage but no action was taken, and she was forced to watch the torture and death of the captives. Bernice would have been put to death too if she hadn't taken refuge in the palace. After this episode, Agrippa returned from Alexandria, and since the people had confidence in Bernice, he placed her in a commanding position on the roof of the palace, while he said a speech encouraging them to avoid violence. Agrippa believed God was on the side of Rome and didn't have the energy to lead an argument, but Bernice had the enthusiasm for the country. At her request, Agrippa reduced the death penalty for a leading zealot to a term of imprisonment. During the late 60s in Jerusalem, as the threats of war increased, Bernice turned her focus toward the party of Herodian militants, because she needed to devote herself to the city rather than her brother. Antipas, Costabar, and Saul were three relatives of the royal family, who were associated with Bernice. The treasurer of the city, Antipas was killed and Gaius Costabar Herod succeeded him, as the one who committed harlotry with the great harlot Bernice, by promoting her as a priestess. After that, she decided to use the tradition of the Herodian women to her advantage, to gain power over Rome. In 68 AD, the son of Vespasian Titus was in Judea assisting his father in war conduct. He was a close associate of Agrippa, and during this time he met the 41-year-old Bernice. Toward the end of 68 AD, Agrippa left Jerusalem, as Acts show Titus and Bernice traveled some way with Paul and then turned back. In Revelation 17, her next appearance is in Ephesus as the woman clothed in scarlet and purple, who was sitting on the scarlet beast. She had taken the position vacated by Helena, as the incarnation of Diana of the Ephesians, and she claimed to be a cardinal and bishop. The badge on her forehead, she wore several letters that indicated her rank, the same as priests, and also she wore an emblem of the emperor Vitellius. He had become a Babylon the Great because in Rome he accepted her hospitality. Early in 70 AD, toward the end of the fall of Jerusalem, Bernice's group in Ephesus used her relationship with Titus, to make her queen regnant and to oust her brother, which only lasted a short time. All this can be seen in the passage of Revelation about the mystery of the woman, which imitates the language of an oracle to speak of her leadership struggles. After Bernice was sent away from Rome, she and Agrippa lived quietly among Diaspora Jews, and Ephesus became their main center. Bernice continued there as the mother, the Sarah to Gentiles. To the Christians, she was the mother of harlots, a woman who combined a claim to the priesthood with sexual license and led other women through the same error. By 75 AD, she was the talk of Rome, because she still was the mistress of Titus. Bernice had traveled to Rome with her brother, at the height of her career, as Roman historian Josephus says. She moved in with Titus expecting him to marry her, and was behaving as if she was already his wife. The prospect of a foreign empress was too much for the Romans, and she was sent away. In 79 AD, again she traveled to Rome when Titus became emperor and again was refused the position of the first lady of the Roman Empire.